Welcome to this video on avoiding procrastination. And this video is for thesis writers. It's very important to understand how procrastination works. And the first step in understanding how it works is to recognize that writing is an emotional process. Many of you may already know this because you may have experienced feelings of inadequacy, imposter syndrome or vulnerability. And sometimes you may experience joy, excitement and positive emotions attached to writing. course not everybody experiences these emotions and not all writing is emotional but thesis writing is often accompanied by strong emotions and more often than not these emotions are negative they tend to revolve around fear anxiety and worry So writing anxiety is where the writer has anxious feelings about the writing task, the writing situation, so what the purpose of the writing is and who's going to read it, and about the self as a writer. The thesis writers often face a tension between their intellectual journey and their emotional journey, and we often feel pulled in these different directions. Emotions help us persevere with our writing or they can cause us to give up. And this is why it's so important to recognize the role that emotions play in writing. So emotions enable us or they disable us. So why is thesis writing so fraught with anxiety? Well, there's a very good reason for this. And that is that we work in an environment where the core business is being critical. That's what we do. We critique things. So supervisors have to give critical feedback to their students. Reviewers need to critique papers. Examiners are expected to use their expertise in their critical assessment of theses. So if an examiner said, I've got no comments, we would all say that examiner hasn't done their job properly. So in our environment, giving critical feedback is what we do. Unfortunately, what happens is that critical environment feeds into our internal critical voice. And that internal critical voice can become very dominant and overwhelming. So the internal critical voice is made up of all the people who have given us feedback on our writing over our lives. So parents, teachers, friends, even if they've given us positive feedback, we might feel now we have to improve, as well as those we imagine might give us feedback like supervisors or examiners. So it doesn't have to be real feedback to feed into our internal voice. We internalize all that feedback and every time we write, these are the voices we hear and, and they tend to be very critical of our writing. So that internal voice is really there to protect us. It doesn't want us to experience the emotions we feel when we get harsh critical feedback. So when we procrastinate, which is avoiding writing, we're often protecting ourselves because we know if we finish the writing, we'll get critical feedback. So I just want to change track a little bit here and look at procrastination types. And these are things you'll see in the popular media and perhaps you've experienced some of these behaviors. And the reason why I'm showing you this is to show you how avoiding writing can be quite insidious because it looks like we're doing something else that's quite important. So the perfectionist is someone who wants to ensure that there'll be no criticism at all. So they try to write the perfect piece of writing and often can't get it done because it's impossible. The cleaner is someone who will get up and clean 
rather than writing. The list maker is someone who makes lists after lists after lists rather than writing. The busy bee who joins committees, becomes president of this and um, chairs events instead of focusing on writing. The social sharer who will take photographs of themselves not writing and share that. The reader who takes the opportunity to read more and search for more reading, very common in academic contexts. And the gamer who will play a game about a writer writing rather than write themselves. So in each of these cases, at the core of it, is that the writer feels anxious or overwhelmed or out of control. And then they go and do something where they feel good and in control. So the feelings uh, cause the actions to happen. So for example, a cleaner procrastinator, and this is something that I do all the time, will see immediate results from cleaning and this makes them feel better. Unlike the writing, which has delayed gratification, it might be months before this piece is finished and in the end often contains harsh feedback. So when you clean, you can see immediate feedback, you feel in control and you feel good. So there are different types of criticism that feed into our critical voice and I'm taking this from Eric Maisel's book on toxic criticism. There's external criticism and there's self-criticism. There's actual criticism and anticipated. So criticism we may not have even received, but we think that we'll get. There's fair criticism that we agree with and unfair criticism where we don't agree with it. But what Maisel says, which is so useful, is that it doesn't matter what the type of criticism it is, they are all hurtful and can have devastating effects. So it doesn't matter if the criticism is fair or unfair. It feeds into our internal critical voice, which can, can become really dominant and stop us from writing. So it's so important to understand procrastination because if we don't understand it and, and understand how we are avoiding writing, we, um, we'll, we'll sideline our goals without even realizing it. So we're sidelining our goals because we're avoiding tasks and because we don't want to be criticized. That criticism could also hold something really useful for us and we could use it. And the more negative we feel about writing, the more we avoid it. So anxiety is really about increasing self-criticism in this environment of critical feedback and it can become crippling when it comes to writing because that internal voice becomes an editor and as we write, we write, we begin a sentence, that voice in our head is saying don't write that, don't write that, it's not good enough, it's not academic enough and then we go and find something easier to do. So here's how procrastination works is that we start writing, which is in academic com context is something that is overwhelmingly complex. The writing we do is intellectual labor. It is difficult and complex. And let's say we're doing a literature review, we begin to feel overwhelmed because there is just so much in writing a literature review. So we feel awful. We start to feel anxious and out of control. So then we find something else to do. An email comes up and we are immediately pulled away into emails or Facebook. And that makes us feel better. So we continue doing that instead of writing. So we are involved in many cognitive steps. These are large or small steps. And even the small ones can cause us to feel bad. So those writing steps make us feel awful and the feelings cause us to act. We get up and go and do something else. So. What we want to try and do is to stop that process and stay in our seats and write. So how do you overcome procrastination? So the first step is to become aware. For example, the busy bee is often doing really good work and often doesn't notice that they are avoiding writing through their good works. 
So you need to become aware that if you have scheduled writing and you're avoiding it, that you're indulging in or you're engaging in procrastinating behaviors. Turn down that internal editor or at least notice how much it is harming you and then notice when you avoid writing. And step two is to develop strategies to keep writing. So the number one strategy is to schedule writing time. So if you have scheduled writing time and you're avoiding it, whether you're being busy or cleaning the house or doing something else, you'll know that you are procrastinating. And then break the writing up into smaller tasks and begin with the smallest task. That, that makes it less overwhelming and um, less anxiety ridden. So you'll feel more comfortable to begin writing. So if you're working on a literature review chapter, take your notes from two papers and write a paragraph incorporating those two papers. And then add another paper and another one and so on until you've built it, rather than trying to write the whole thing all at once. There are other strategies, so setting a timer is a really good way to keep that critical voice quiet. Set a timer for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and free write, so don't go back and edit. Only edit once the time is over. Focus on starting rather than finishing. All you want to do is start one paragraph. And give yourself permission to write bad drafts. Tell your critical voice that you'll fix it up later. You don't have to show anyone the draft until you are ready to. But write terrible drafts and then fix them up. And focus on telling the story. What is the story you want to tell? So let's look at the key points of this video. Writing is emotional and difficult. It's an intellectual labor and we need to persevere. And thesis, writing, three thesis writers often experience anxiety. And this is mostly because we work in a very critical environment. All the feedback or criticism we receive feeds into a critical internal voice, which becomes an editor when we write. So this editor constantly criticizes our writing and makes us feel awful. So we find something else to do that makes us feel better. And that's what procrastination is. So become aware of procrastinating behaviors and develop strategies to keep writing and to get your writing done. Now we have a number of other videos that expand on this, that dealing with criticism and developing writing fluency. There are lots of strategies in those, so please have a look at those videos. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope it helps you to achieve your writing goals.